How's it going everybody? In this video I will be teaching you about De Morgan's Laws. In propositional logic and Boolean algebra, this law is conformed of a pair of transformation rules that are both solid and valid rules of inference. These rules allow for the expression of conjunctions and disjunctions purely in terms of each other via negation. First of all, we shall briefly explain both of these terms so that you can better understand what we are talking about in the video. The first term is known as the conjunction and it behaves similar to the AND operator. In the sense that if all inputs are true, then the resulting output will equal true. Otherwise, the output shall be false. The second term is known as the disjunction. And it behaves similar to the OR gate or logic operator. In the sense that if at least one input equals true, the output of this operation shall be true. Else the output will be false. A friendly reminder to all of those who are just tuning in, true is equivalent to one which is equivalent to high. And false is equivalent to zero, which is equivalent to low. I may alternate between these, so it is important to keep that in mind. Now that we have discussed the terms, we shall continue to properly explain the rules that conform the Morgan's Laws. These rules go as follows. The negation of a conjunction is the disjunction of the negations and this can be expressed using the following notations. The complement of A and B is De Morgan's equivalent to the complement of A or the complement of B. The second rule is the negation of the disjunction is the conjunction of the negations. And the corresponding expression for that rule is the following. The complement of A or B is De Morgan's equivalent to the complement of A and complement of B. If you are in the area or field of engineering, particularly in electrical and computer engineering, these are notations that you must know and you must remember. There is also an alternate or you could say equivalent expression or form of notation in which you might encounter these Boolean algebra expressions and 
I will also teach you that one so that you can be better prepared. Better safe than sorry, I would say. I shall throw an arrow pointing to the corresponding equivalent. The other way you could write this is with a bar above the expression. This reads as follows. The complement of A and B is T. Morgan's equivalent to the complement of A or the complement of B. And I shall throw an arrow for the second expression. And likewise, this reads the complement of A or B is D. Morgan's equivalent to A and B be complemented. Now to further prove these statements, I will go to the table and in it I will teach you and show you an example in which I go step by step solving a D. Morgan's problem so that you can see that the expression to the left is indeed equivalent to the one in the right. Let's get started. As you can see I have drawn this table beforehand in an attempt to keep the video as brief and concise as possible. We have three columns. The first one is divided into two. The first one we shall label it the inputs column and since we have n equals 2 for this base case using the 2 to the n formula which in this case would be 2 to the second we have four possible outcomes for the operation that will be taking place as our example we will label the inputs A and B for simplicity sakes of course and since we said we have four possibilities we will begin stating them 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. For our second column, we shall label it as follows. The negation of a conjunction And the third column is the disjunction of the negations. From what I explained previously, our base formula is the complement of A and B. will generate our output y. And for our third column, the complement of A or the complement of B will generate an equivalent output y. Now we shall begin plugging in the possibilities in order to see what output is generated. Zero and zero outputs zero. The complement of zero is one. Zero and one outputs zero, and the complement of zero is one. One and zero outputs zero. The complement of zero is one. One and one outputs one. The complement of one results in zero. 
Now, for our third column, the complement of zero or the complement of zero translates to one or one, which outputs high. The complement of zero or the complement of one translates to one or zero which generates an output of 1, which is high. The complement of 1 or the complement of 0 translates to 0 or 1, which is 1. And last but not least, the complement of 1 or the complement of 1 translates to 0 or 0 which, as you probably can guess, will output zero, which is equivalent to a low. If you take a closer look, all of the possible cases match the corresponding column, meaning that the negation of a conjunction is in fact the disjunction of the negations. Now we shall proceed to our second table where we will prove that the negation of a disjunction is the conjunction of the negations. Let's move on, shall we? For our second table we shall take the same approach. We got n equals 2 inputs using 2 to the n which is 2 to the second that produces four possible outcomes. The first column will be for inputs A and B. The second column will be for the negation of a disjunction and the third column will be for the conjunction of the negation. The four possibilities are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Our base formula is the complement of A or B will generate our output Y. And our equivalent expression, or De Morgan's equivalent, is the complement of A and complement of B generates y. By plugging in each of our possible combinations we create the following. We have the complement of 0 or 0 which translates to the complement of 0 outputting 1. For our second case or scenario we have the complement of 0 or 1 which translates to the complement of 1 which outputs 0. Our third case we have 1 or 0 the complement of 1 equals 0. And last but not least, we have 1 or 1 and the complement of the output, which from this operation would be 1, equals 0. Now for our equivalent column, we have the complement of 0 and the complement of 0. which translates to 1 and 1 
equals high because for the AND gate when both of the inputs are high the output is high otherwise the output will be zero the complement of zero and the complement of one translates to one and zero which output zero or low the complement of one and the complement of zero translates to zero and one which output zero the complement of one and the complement of one translates to zero and zero which outputs low again like in the past table you can see that each row has the same result as its matching column meaning that De Morgan's laws are indeed correct We are here in Logisim in order to test all the expressions that we showed in the tables earlier. By using the index finger tool, we will toggle all the possible combinations in order to prove once and for all that the Morgan's law is accurate. Our first case is when both the inputs are low. When that happens, the output is high. When the inputs A is 0 and B is 1, the output is high. On the third case, when A is high and B is low, the output is high. And last but not least, on the fourth case, when both inputs A and B equal high, the output is low. For our second logic circuit, when both inputs are low, the output is high. When A is low and B is high, the output is low. For a third case, when A is high and B is low, the output is low. And finally, when both inputs are high, the output remains low, meaning the LED stays gray. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. For any comments or questions, please contact me on the following places. At Twitter, at Giovanni0918, or at Google+, Plus, at PlusGiovanniOrlandoI7. Thank you for watching, have a nice day.